and know who you are. God is good. Amen. Yeah. Pastor Bobby. Well, let's get excited in the Lord's house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
listen as loud as we want. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being your children. Hallelujah. Well, I have a testimony. This happened on Monday, and Vanaya and I were coming back from Kihei on the high road in Wailuku. And we were at a stop, and there were cars in front of us. And all I heard so loudly was, and I was sitting in the car like, what is that? Where is that coming from? You know, I'm looking on the side. Then I look in the mirror on this side, on Benaya's side, and I see this old Dodge truck just coming right for us. And then it turned, the, the, you know, the guy turned on the side of the road, and he slammed into the sign there was a sign with two legs and a big top and we were just, me and Bernard were like like we were in shock you know I looked over to look at the guy there was no blood Hallelujah. it was like you know big dodge heavy duty strong you know old trucks not the newer ones hallelujah and um, he was fine there was no blood he um you know, after when I went home, I told Pastor Aki, I didn't even ask him if he was okay. And, and Pastor Aki said, yeah, Bob, he could have said, are you okay? You know, he could have found out, but he was okay. There was no blood. He was like, you know, did, he didn't want to look at us, that's for sure. But I thought, oh, my goodness. We were kind of in shock, and I thought, oh, my gosh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the angels that he gives charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. Thank you, Lord. Because thank you, Lord, that that did not happen. But if something was to happen where he did slam into, we would have slammed into the people in front of us, and it could have been, it could have been bad. But God. But God. Hallelujah. Again, and this time he showed, this time he showed us how he saved us. There's a lot of times God saves us and we don't even know. We don't even know. Amen. That's right. A lot of times the Lord, a lot of times the Lord heals us. Thank you, Lord. We don't even know he's healing us. And we're so thankful. Yes. We have so much to praise the Lord about. And you know, and then after later on I thought, oh yeah, I didn't even ask the guy. Like, what, you okay? Hello? Hello. Pay attention. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he was texting. He probably was texting. Because even though it's against the law, I see it happening all the time. <laughs> I'm like, where's the cops when you need them? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're around. <laughs> Hallelujah. But praise the Lord. Amen. That he saved us. He kept us. Thank you, Lord, that nothing bad happened because of him and him alone and that's and it was such a long loud screech I was like what is that like it's like huh what is that that can't be that. and God showed me how good he is how good he is amen come on come on he's done it for me he has done it for you hallelujah he has done it for you hallelujah thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's worship.
your name on high, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day and all that it holds. Our day is going to be so blessed because we chose to put you first. Thank you for every family represented in this house today, Lord. Thank you for our children at the gathering center. Thank you, Lord, for this church and ministry. Thank you for every leader, every laborer. Thank you, Lord, for our church family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for our online family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the associate pastors and their families. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for the worship pastor, the youth pastor, and their families. Hallelujah. Thank you for the apostle of the house and for his family. Hallelujah. Thank you for the missionary in the house and for his family. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness in our lives, Lord. We lift up to you our nation, this nation, this state. And, Lord, we pray for help. Help us, Lord. Help our government, Lord God. Help the United States of America. Help our government, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for every church preaching the uncompromised word of God. We thank you, Lord, for every soldier at war, at home, our veterans, their families. Hallelujah. We pray, Father, for those who are suffering throughout the world so much calamity, so much tragedy. Please help them, Lord, to draw close to you so that you can draw close to them. Lord, we especially pray for those who have lost loved ones, those who are heartbroken, Lord, that you would comfort them, that you would blanket them with your peace. We thank you for your servant, Lord, and what you have deposited into him today what you will bring forth in this house. Thank you, Lord, that your word will never return void, but accomplish what you have set forth for it to do. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We honor you. We thank you, Jesus, for the precious blood that you shed on Calvary for each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord, because of you we have life. We have abundant life, eternal life. We love you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and all the glory. We thank you, Lord, and we have, we do and we have always declared this house a house of praise unto the one and only true God. Thank you, Abba. Have your way in this place today. Holy Spirit, rise up big in your people. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for the angels in the house as well, Lord. In Jesus' name, all of God's kids say amen. Good morning. It is a great morning. It's a good morning to be alive. Microphone's a little light. Can you turn me up, please? I don't know where that's coming from. We're going to turn up the sound a little bit. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me all good? We're good? Okay. I can talk a little louder if I have to. We don't want no feedback. Every day we face life and God gives us the opportunities. God gives us not only the anointing, but he gives us the direction that we need. And that's today's subject that I'm going to share just a little bit because I couldn't cover it all in one day. But it's God's conduit system. He has a system. And sometimes we don't understand the system has a lot of quirks according to us, but not to God. So I could go over the whole Bible. That take way too long. So I'm going to take three characters starting out of the Old Testament. Of course, always ending up in the New Testament. We know that Jesus is the perfect person to follow and, and let him lead. But there's a power in God in a conduit. Now, we know a conduit is like a piping or something that brings in water or electricity. Those are used for conduits. Conduits are used for that. And the picture is to show you that there is something about water that signifies how we start and begin to become a conduit for God. And we know the Word of God is very clear. So we're going to go to the Word of God in John 3, 70, uh, 38. excuse me. And this is the Aramaic Bible. What? Uh, something English. Uh, uh, Aramaic Bible. So, plain English. Plain English. Thank you. My son helps me. See, he backs me up all the time. In plain English. So Aramaic is an older, of course, language that was used prior to the Jewish language in the Hebrew custom. But um, if you ever saw the Passion, y'all saw the Passion? Yeah. 
that was Aramaic that they were speaking. Although it's not a New Testament language, the New Testament was basically Greek. But we're going to go here because of a word and a simple thing that's used in the top line. When you're ready, thank you, everybody. We're going to read together. You let me know when you're ready. ready. Ready? All right, let's read. Everyone who trusts in me, just as the Scriptures have said, rivers of living water shall flow within him. Father, we thank you for through us and through the power that you've given us, living water, which is you, Jesus, will flow through us. And we thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Most, thank you for standing to reverence God. Most, all scriptures will say believe. But believe is trust. Hey, sweetie. Believe is trust. But more than believe, we got to come to know that we have living water. There's a, when the Pentecostal church we used to go to and we were first being trained up, well, they, you know that old song, right? I got a river of life flowing out of me. Make the lame to walk and the blind to see. I actually know more verses than one, which is why I don't sing too much. Open prison doors, except I practice this. Get the captives free. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well, within my soul. Spring up, oh well, and make me whole. Spring up, oh well. Life abundantly. So it's a powerful thing to have living water flowing out of us. And that's through Jesus Christ. You remember the woman at the well? He said, the water I give you, you won't thirst no more. So we're talking about an eternal power that comes from that living water. But he says we can have it flowing out of us so that people that run into us know stagnant water. Amen? Because we all know that stagnant water has a terrible smell. Amen? That would be not wise words that we use probably. But we have living water flowing out of us. Amen? It, uh, it didn't say gushing. A conduit controls the flow. That's why I really like, and Pastor Olula, Sister D, I know they work on the the screens and I like the, the 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 water the depth of the water and I was sharing with my wife Pastor Bobby I said God it's not a rapids the conduit does not ignite rapids rapids would be like Phwah! and everything around it gets its controlled distribution that's how God does it so the first person I'm going to talk about out of this scripture goes to the Old Testament his name is Abraham you all remember him Abram wonderful man of God powerful man of God a man that, I'm going to share some scriptures versing into the New Testament that shares that he was, he was called the father of faith. You know? But yet he blessed nations because of his faith, because of his trust and his belief in God. Amen? And so we have to be like that. You might say, well, I'm born again a long time. Yeah, but do you trust him? Because sometimes he'll have you to do stuff that don't make sense, don't feel comfortable. We don't even like it. I like what uh, Joyce Meyer said. You don't got to like anything that God tells you. You just got to love them to do it. Because sometimes he tells us stuff we're like, really? I don't even like those people. They don't treat me nice. They're rude to me, you know. But he tells us all the time what to do. And it's good to follow his instructions. Is it hard to be a Christian? Yes. When I say Christian, I mean a follower of Christ. We are all believers. But when you claim to be a Christian, according to Unger's Dictionary, you follow in the ways of Christ. Does it make us perfect? I got news for you. You don't have to be perfect. I always say I serve God with my faults. And I work on them daily. Because we are not perfect. God knows we're not perfect. We're created in His image. But when He created us, He knew there was going to be hiccups. That we choose. That we make those decisions. But it's wonderful to know that God's still God. The characters I give you were not perfect. Abraham used to worship the moon. Let's be serious about this. This is one of the things he used to worship. But God transforms us and brings us out of those areas and where we were, all of us, and brings us into where he wants us to be. So the beginning of being a conduit for God begins with Jesus Christ and you having living water flowing out of you. It has to be living water. Not trinkles of flow. Not rapids, but not like drippy faucet that irritates, right? Not, doesn't say that. doesn't say that you have to have drippy faucet out of you. Or you have to have drips of water. It says living water flowing. Let me tell you what about a conduit. It flows consistently. It's a non-stop area with God. So it's supposed to be every day. doesn't mean we don't have hard days. doesn't mean we don't always like, oh, man, are you serious? I don't know about you, but I enjoy going to church. Whether it's here or if I'm visiting or if I'm I enjoy it. Why do I enjoy it? Because the Word is good. The Bible says heaven and earth are going to pass away, but the Word will not. So the more of the Word I get in me, the better off I am. We face things every day, right? Yes. Kenneth Copeland said it best, Pastor Kenneth Copeland. He said, you don't want to leave, you'd rather leave your house without your pants than the Word of God. 
can get a pants, but you might need that word really desperately later, and it might help you out. So I love, I love when they demonstrate that because it helps us to understand. Understand that God is everything He says He is. That's why it says, as it is said in the Scriptures. It's a past tense. It's already been written. And this is the New Testament. The beginning of being a conduit for God rests l totally upon having living water inside of you. Because if you don't got living water inside of you, then what do you got coming out of you? I remember we always just sing that at the church we were at in Lahaina. You know, it was like you don't need a screen with words, right? Because everybody memorized the songs because they're all like simple songs. And nowadays everything is so contemporary and so many songs. And that's the truth, right? What an awesome God we serve. I mean, I used to get mad when they play a song, I don't know. What a mighty God. What an awesome God. What is that? Is there not a song with awesome God? Yeah. Awesome God. Different tune, right? That's why I don't sing. <laughs> Keep on telling everybody that. <laughs> but those songs were, I mean, they're, they're powerful today as they were then. But I used to get upset if there was a song that I didn't know the words. And I'd be like, then you mime, right? <laughs> Do all kinds of things, you know. Everyone who trusts in me, everyone who believes in me, the word says. Most translations use the word believes. Just as the scriptures have said, past tense, rivers of living water shall flow out of them. Shall flow. Abraham is called the father of faith, and through that example of his faithful power of trusting and believing in God, all nations were blessed. That's Galatians chapter 3, verses 6, 7, 8, and 9, all together combined. So I'll just give it to you that way. It's, it's easier. Abraham, we know, was a man of faith, right? But yet he had some... They used to call him you know, Abram the warrior, Abram the, you know, the, the mighty man of God, Abram the Hebrew, it's written in the Old Testament. That's when he had to go and rescue, you know, some areas. Know that God is great. He knows everything we go through. There's Moses, there's many others, but I just chose these characters, what God gave me into understanding, because we all know that Abraham had gone through some stuff, right? From the altar, Isaac, just as it's written, it says after Isaac was delivered off the altar and the sacrifice was made known to Abraham, the, the English scripture says, now I know that he loves me. But in the Hebrew translation, now he knows that he loves me. Amen. See, because God, oops, God knows, God knows everything. There's a little runner, huh? I know, right? Mini me. Mini, <laughs> yeah, mini me. God is so good. So, God has the answers. He doesn't need us to answer any questions. If He asks you a question, He already has the answer. You better have the right answer. Amen? Not exaggerate or make up. or If He asks you a question, you shouldn't be going, let me think about it a minute. He already knows. So normally He would ask that just so that we understand and that we know we have that knowledge and that understanding. Abraham was a wonderful man of God, but he was a man of faith. It's written in he, uh, Romans chapter 4. It says that beyond doubt, he believed that if he had to sacrifice his son, God could raise him from the dead. So his faith and his trust was unconditional. Or what we call absolute, without change. And therefore, I believe that our hearts for God have to be in that same area. Not being perfect, but knowing. Another powerful person in the Bible that demonstrates wonderful, wonderful conduit movement is Joseph, the Old Testament. We know what he went through. And I like to study sometimes into the Jewish area with rabbis, you know, and they're not saved yet, but I appreciate them. They still eliminate the old with God, you know, and they, they know the Old Testament back and forth. So I listen and I read some of their areas. And I learn about the Old Testament. We know that Jesus is the fulfillment. No doubt about it. I wouldn't be standing if it wasn't for Jesus. But understanding some things that might give you some greater depth to who God is and how He operates. So Joseph, another powerful person, of course, his training was very difficult. Do you agree? The pit, we all know that, right? The pit, the prison, the palace. Well, let me tell you something in the Hebrew that they teach. It was difficult to submit to God only because, not because he didn't love him, because of the things he went through. The betrayal of his brothers, you know, the things that was good. Being a conduit, he had to be fully surrendered. That means you got to trust everything. That's hard. Fully surrendered means, oh my gosh, I, it must be the devil doing this to me when God goes, no, no, I'm just training you. I'm just humbling you. And this is the truth on Joseph. A lot of times we don't realize that part of Joseph's training in what he went through, it says, and I was sharing with Pastor Bobby last night, his pain was applicable to his destiny. The pain of hurt. He was never destroyed. 
He became the leading guy in the prison. He always helped others. He used his gift to generate to help others. So from the pit, it was a terrible, I mean, your brothers throw you in a pit, you know, come on. But God pulled one to save him, right? Because he had a destiny. See, Joseph's mission was to go through the things, but he had an assignment placed in Egypt to make sure that he was there for his assignment to take care of business for God. One of the things that I had to look at and to see, one of the questions that was asked to the rabbi by another person, which was a Christian, I'm reading the context, it says, what was Joseph's gift? And the rabbi answers and says, Joseph's gift was the gift of life. And I thought, wow, because he did so much in giving life and sharing the food and different things, but even saving his brothers. You notice at the end in, in chapter 50, after his daddy died, all the brothers got worried again. You notice that? That's guilt. Guilt don't come from God. It comes from sin. So they still had residue happening where they're going, my brother's going to kill us now. Daddy's gone, no protection. But no, he said something powerful, Genesis 15 and 20. Am I in God's place that I would do such a thing? See, he never tried to take the place of God in making those decisions. There's some decisions we should stay away from because only God knows those decisions. And I remember as a young Christian, I made comments and I would add things to it right away. And later on, you have to repent. Maybe that was just my life. Because sometimes we have what we think is real. But really, let me tell you straight from my heart, God decides who goes to heaven and who does not. Not us. We can judge sin, but we're not to judge the person or their destination. I see no scripture to back it up. To tell, this is what you do and this is where you're going. Because only God knows the truth of that person, the depth of that person's heart and what they work with within them and when I studied and I saw that Joseph's pain had to be demonstrated or imparted into him in order to humble him for the position he was about to take you couldn't go from the field and all those visions everything bowing down to you right to the chamber of Pharaoh and become the prime minister if you would or governor of Egypt you can't do that it's like you just believe and then you're the president of the United States well maybe that can happen sometimes yeah. you never know nowadays <laughs> so the will of God by trusting and believing him is imparted into us and that's where your gifts become great with the living water flowing out of you through Jesus Christ you get the opportunity to bless others to help others to, to show them Joseph was all though it says he says this, this rabbi says Joseph which really was blessed me in his words exactly I want to read it so that I make sure I quote him properly. Joseph was the conduit to the holy kingship. That's the, now you've got to understand this. The, not the Messianic Jews, but the Jewish people, they're still waiting for Jesus. You understand that, right? They're waiting for the Messiah to come. But that doesn't mean they don't have information. That doesn't mean that God doesn't love them. God loves the Holy Land, the chosen people. I learn from what they know. And I, you all remember, I asked a question. The rabbi still don't have the answer. I feel like so intellectual, but not really. But um, I asked him a question, and I said, When Jacob met Caleb, Esau, I'm sorry, Esau, I'm sorry, Caleb, Esau, that was Joshua with Caleb, right? When Jacob met Esau, when they reconciled, what season was it in the Jewish calendar? That was my question. And the rabbi goes, Good question. Well, years later, no answer yet. Because I'm figuring they got all the scrolls, they got the things, because I couldn't find it. So I want to know what time of year, you know, because there's festivals, there's, you know, like, there's Rosh Hashanah, there's Yom Kippur. It had to be during a season, I believe, that signifies God's celebrations. But that's just me. But they still haven't answered. And they got like, you know, they, I mean, you know, they probably got the dead, dead scrolls. I don't know what they got. <laughs> but they got a lot of stuff that we don't have, you know, to be able to get the information. But I'm really blessed because this rabbi always tells me, are you celebrating Rosh Hashanah? Did you get your dates? I'm like, not really, I don't need dates. But, you know. They, they work with you, but it was a holy kingship, the conduit that they share about Joseph. And he was, if you think about it. Such power. Joseph's pain was the key, this is how they wrote it, to his greatness. Hard to conceive that, huh? That you would think that pain would have a demonstration of greatness. But you notice he wasn't destroyed. Just went through rough times. Just went through hurtful times. Just went through times that he didn't understand. Accused of rape when he didn't do it. But he didn't go, I didn't do it! He just went to prison. But he was placed for those two years underneath Pharaoh's chamber. 
Even though somebody forgot, it didn't matter. When the remembrance came, it was time. See, God has a time for each and every one of us to do what He's called us to do. If we're not patient, we won't be in the right place. Remember Moses? You all know, and I won't go into detail. Forty years he left. He killed one Egyptian. I guess he was going to deliver Egypt one Egyptian at a time. I don't know. And he delivered the, you know, the, I don't know what he was thinking. But he wanted to help, and he killed that Egyptian. He ran. And he was in the wilderness for 40 years, but not that wilderness, you know. Midianites and different things that happened there. Found a wife, right? Got things. 40 years later, you got the burning bush. He's 80 now. Thank Jesus God is patient, huh? Amen. Hopefully we don't got to wait that long. But the point is, is that he did get the call, the burning bush that didn't burn, and he went back and served another 40 years. I'm always blessed by that because God waited for him. But it cost the Jewish people, the, the Hebrew people, 30 extra years. Because the word is written that they shall be in captivity for 400 years. With Moses' action on the 390th year, 40 years later, it's 430 years. It cost somebody something. But God waited for him. So I'm like, wow, I want to be like that. You know, God wait for me because sometimes I'm a slow poke. Main thing, we keep moving forward, right? And sometimes I am. I'm a slow poke. You know, you move like Moses. I know, I know, I know. So his, Joseph's pain was the key to his greatness. Number two, Joseph ministered to others in his darkest time. When he was in that prison, he ministered to those. He was the keeper. You know, today you'd be passing out books, you know, doing whatever. But his cell was open. I mean, where was he going to go, really, right? But when you serve in that capacity, during your darkest hours, during your hardest times, I always believe, Mike Murdoch said it, so I have it on my wall. But when you solve the problems of others or help them, God will solve yours. You know, sometimes we can't solve our problems. Yep. But we go, hey, I can help you with yours. You know, so some people might say, how can you help them if you can't help yourself? Well, because I don't have the answer to my problem yet, but I got the answer to theirs. Because God already took us through it, and we went through some experience about it, right? Yeah. So we keep on helping people. But that's his, one of his proverbs that he shares out of Proverbs. You know, his proverbs meaning he, he lives by that, the seven keys to success I have on my wall. And I live by that. One of the, the first thing he says is, what you tolerate, you cannot change. And I love that because it means when you accept things that are not right and wrong, you can't change it. You can't bring any distinction to it. Because you're just saying, okay, well, that's fine. It's all good. And I won't get into detail, but I believe those Proverbs that Solomon wrote. And every time I read Ecclesiastes, I go, because it's all in vain, right? Because he lived so rich and so wonderfully and had everything. And sometimes we don't think that God is so, so good to bring such power to us. Amen? Third, Joseph didn't push his own agenda in his life. He didn't push what he wanted. He didn't put his own, I got an agenda. He didn't do that. He was at God's mercy. He might not have known it at times, but he was. Because he was just doing bragging rights, right? Plenty of people got bragging rights, right? I got this. I saw this vision. Everybody's bowing down to me. And the brothers are like, oh, yeah? Okay, we'll fix you up. Look, he's wearing a nice jacket. Let's take that jacket too. You know, sometimes you don't have to say anything. People already see who you are. I'm not saying Joseph shouldn't do that, but maybe he was just a little young and, you know, again, God humbled him. And had to, you know, when God's going to give you a great, great, great power to make a difference in life, he's going to have to make some adjustments. Those adjustments help us to achieve what God has called us to do. And we've got to trust him through that. That's why the scripture says, most scriptures uh, say, or translations say, believe right but the one i picked was trust because when you believe god you trust him you really trust him yeah. and you trust that he's got you no matter what you're going through no matter what you're feeling because feelings can be deceiving i know that for myself too feelings can be deceiving i always teach when you make a when you make a decision based on an emotion at the time might be the wrong decision that you're going to make it could be a permanent to a temporary problem. It could be a lot of things. So we got to calm down. I speak to myself. Amen. It's like we should walk around with a blood pressure thing on us. You know, it's like getting mad. Oh, 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 warning, warning. Stop. Mellow out, mellow out. You know, it's enough energy to run the city. You know, we just got to cut it out. So all of that information is given. But in Genesis chapter 41, verse 37 and 38, this is what is said about Joseph by Pharaoh. And this is powerful to me. He says, the Spirit of God was visible in His trust and the actions of a physical realm. In other words, He said, where would we find a person that the Spirit of God lives in them? 
That's what he said. That's heavy for Old Testament, right? I mean, I could go into Daniel, but I'm not going. Remember Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego? Even the king said, look like four guys in there. I don't know about you. Like I always say, when I barbecue, I smell like the barbecue. I really got to take a bath before I eat, right? Because you're in there, right? These guys walked in the fire, came out clean. Amen. Nothing. The guys that threw them in there died and burned. I mean, seriously, that's a sign right there. Sometimes God gives us these signs, and we go, oh, wow, interesting. <laughs> interesting. That's, that's like miracle power in action, you know? So in the physical realm, Pharaoh could see that Joseph possessed the Spirit of God in him. He said, in him. It didn't say on him. So no God was moving through whomever he chooses from way back when. Again, that's Genesis 41. You can see that over there. The last person I'm going to talk about beside Jesus, because I have to close with Jesus at all times, because he's the main guy. But, and I appreciate him because I wouldn't be here. But is King David. Was he a conduit for God? Absolutely. 100% he was a conduit. So are we a conduit or are we a can't do it? Because I don't know, but I used to say that before, you know. I don't know if I can do that, you know. So if we're a conduit, we don't get to say can't do it. We don't get to go close the valve, close the valve, close the valve. No, it just flows, it just flows. And God says, I'm the controller. You don't have the valve. Oh, that's why it's a struggle. Once you submit to God and become a conduit from that living water in you, He wants to flow it. He wants to control it. Not because he's some kind of control person, but because he knows where it should go, how it should be distributed, where it should go, the people, the, the places, whatever it is. Yes. Amen. We don't control that. Conduits are used, listen, in, in life for water and electricity. Let's look at those two. It's to protect them, right? It's to protect what's inside. So when we become the conduit for Jesus Christ, he protects not only the inside, but the outside. Amen. What flows that, because we're the living vessels. We are that power that he created. Not to boast on any Christian or any one of us, but we have that ability. You know, God will always help you to love people. When you say, God, teach me to love, he sends unlovables. Yeah, he does. Unlovable, unlovable. You know, he just sends unlovables <laughs> so that we can learn to, I'm not, I, and then I prayed for patience. Oh, that lasts for years. Oh, oh, yeah. Forever, and it's like decades it can go on, yeah. Decades. And I read the scriptures, you know. got to read the scriptures so I come out of this quicker. <laughs> And just when you think you made it, yo oh boy, yeah. But praise the Lord that that isn't what qualifies us. It's Jesus Christ that qualifies us. Living water. Now, Paul always said, if I'm going to brag, I'm going to brag on my wrongdoings. I'm going to brag on my inappropriate areas that I don't always accomplish. And if he was to be a sinner, which he was, he said, I am the greatest of them all. I'm the chief, it says in the King James. But he wasn't bragging about sinning. He was saying, if God can do this for me. Remember the disciples didn't trust him. They're like, he's going to come over here and kill us. Remember he used to kill all the Christians or lead them into captivity. You know, he's going to. But he, they had to. And he took that. He said, okay, well, that's the way it is, you know. Because what he did had significance to what he was doing. In other words, there's consequences to our actions. And he faced them mostly in prison, right? Put people in prison. Wrote most of the books in prison. You figure it out. Math is simple. But God decides that. Just like the pain that Joseph went through designated his future. It was the key. Ouch! Ouch! But it was the key to accomplish a task that he didn't even know to become that governor of Egypt and save nations, not just his own family, but save God's children at a time that they needed to be saved. So we have that great, great power within us. Within us. Even the little ones know it. They just want to be around the anointing, you know. She's like, yeah, let's do it, man. Let's go. Sometimes she don't talk too much. Maybe I should learn from her. She just goes. <laughs> so we have to realize, we have to make that decision today as we come to close to a close now. Are, you, are we conduits or we can't do it? When somebody sees us, do they see us as a flowing conduit of God? Well, I don't ask him. He can't do it. She can't do it. They always tell me the same thing. I can't do it. It'll never work. Remember the cartoon character? It'll never work. We have to be positive. I remember I used to say, when God would tell me to do something, it may be financially, it may be whatever. One of the things I, I used to think, I wouldn't say it out loud because I, I know God can hear inside. It didn't say it out loud for everybody else to hear. But God already heard it, right? I used to say, I don't have it. One day I was sitting there, Pastor Bobby was preaching, and I was thinking that. Oh, I don't have And God says, you need to change your verbiage, your language. And so I said, oh, right 
question. Where is it? So if he tells me, Rocky, do this, where is it? How can I accomplish this? Where is the provisions? Where is the what I need to do this? You know where it is. I don't know where it is, but I know you know, so tell me, where is it? I believe how we approach God is very important. The questions we ask, right? Remember, we shared that last week, I believe it was. You know, who go up first? They should ask, should we go up first and fight against the Benjamites? They said, who should go up first? Judah. Judah got slaughtered. God is a God of power, and He is a God of order. He's also the only true God that we could ever understand His great love and His discipline, humility. You know, when I come to Him in prayer, I just go, you know all things, so I'm going to come. God doesn't need us to answer any questions for Him. He has the information. So we answer the questions so we have the information, and we know we have the information. I know that sounds crazy, but that's really what it is. We cannot say He's all-knowing, but He don't know what, you know, Rocky, where are you going? Well, he don't know where I'm going. No, no. He knew Elijah was in the cave. He just said, where are you? He knew where Adam was, but Adam had to realize where he was. You know, sometimes we don't know where we are. So God will bring it to our attention. He's not punishing us. He brings it to our attention so we can see where we are. Amen? That's why God says, never hinder little children. We do it on our dedications. Children are great. Amen? I went to a church. You better put the children in the back. Don't let them run around the church. Anybody know where I come from? Anybody been in that church before? Well, oh, you guys are all modern churches already. And most of you here grew up like that anyway. But they were really strict, and we, we, you know, we complied. A conduit is a channel. It's, it said, now, don't be the wrong channel, amen? You could turn the channel, not that kind of channel. Or you know how they said, we're channeling right now. You got those demons that come through those channels, you know, tarot cards and read your horoscope, amen? If God wanted you in the stars, he'd make you a planet, amen? Just saying. He made us people. <laughs> he loves us yes. in his image. Yes. Through which sometimes it's conveyed, which means it's transported like water, as I said, and like electricity. But God wants the living conduit, the living person, to transmit, to flow, to give what he has to distribute. Whether it's in your family, whether it's in the neighborhood, whether it's for your neighbor, your community, whatever, whatever the expansion of God is. But his conduits go on forever. He had many of them in the Bible, Old and New Testament, and he has them sitting right in this church today. But it has to be your decision that goes, God, I'm a conduit. No, I can't do it. you got to make that decision. Amen. That's not my decision to make. It's yours. But once you say, I'm a conduit, you got to watch out because he starts to put attachments on you, right? You know, I'm going to attach you to flow here. I'm going to attach you to flow here. I'm going to have you be nice to the people you don't like. You know, I'm going to have you to say hi to the... Benaiah is consistent, my son. Our neighbor across the street doesn't say hi much at all. They'll look straight at us, turn away. You could say, well, that's because we're this or that. We don't, don't even bother. But Benaiah will go out and go, hello, morning, until they look. When they acknowledge him, they're really nice. They go, hi, and he'll just go. Somebody walking on the street with a dog. Nice dog. Nice dog. Hello. And they're, oh, yeah. People are so wrapped up in their own world, but it's nice to have, you know, I'm not bragging on him, but that's how he does it. He don't care. I'm like, shh. Like, he don't care. He don't say hi one way or the other, you know. And he wants to say hi. He wants to be acknowledged just with a hi. Isn't that right, Benaya? Yeah. And that's how he is. That's his nature, you know. A mom listened to him the other night. He was talking in his sleep. How many talk in your sleep? See, I know I do, but I don't know what I'm talking about. Because I'm sleeping. Yeah. Right? But Pastor Bobby was telling the leadership today, she comes real close and listens to me sometimes. <laughs> I might be revealing some things. I don't know. But Benaiah was speaking in his sleep, and he was sharing. First he mumbled, rah, 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 and then he said, I can do all things to Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And then he mumbled again. Rah, 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 rah. Who knows what he was doing at that time? And he said, No, those who trust in the Lord will be joyful. Proverbs. That comes from his devotion. That comes from devotion with God. That's what that is. It's not us. It's his devotion getting the word in him. And I said, wow, what a pleasant dream. Sometimes I get nightmares. You know, I'm glad when I don't remember them. When I'm going through them, it's not easy. You know, cause anybody have had a nightmare? And then when you wake up, you're like, oh, thank God that wasn't real. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because <laughs> it seems so real at the time. I've had those dreams before. Not so much now, I think, because you know, I think when you snore, you don't dream a lot. I don't know, I'm just saying. <laughs> My own way of thinking. <laughs> so
So David was a channel, and he was conveying the power of God through him by his demonstration. Did it mean he didn't mess up? No, David messed up. King David messed up big time. And I'm not going to go through all the things he did, but he was not a perfect man. And at the time that he was anointed king, Saul was king. Samuel anointed David when Saul was already king. Saul had already been chosen because the people wanted to be like everybody else. When the church wants to be like everybody else, we got a problem. We got a big problem. The enemy's waiting for that opportunity and that open door for us to say, I want to be just like them. I want to, you know, Billy Joe said, I want to laugh at the sinners and cry with the saints. You can't do that. You're either going to cry or not. There's happy days. It's the truth. But we, we have to be who we are. But if we choose to want what the world wants, it's going to be trouble. And that's what happened, and that's why Saul became king. That he was the highest in his family as far as in stature and everything, and we know that. But meanwhile, he's not being obedient. I'm going to tell you something that Saul rarely, or if he never did, never repented. I never read a scripture where it says God asked, I mean, Saul asked God to forgive him. He told Samuel a couple of times, don't reveal that to anybody. His selfishness, his self-containment was obvious. David was quick to repent. But Saul was a person that was selected, but the people wanted it. He drafted, he put taxes. He did everything that our government is doing today. <laughs> the Senate. Everything was constructed out of the Roman Empire. And I won't get into detail. But the power is that he wasn't following God's mission or vision. David was anointed. He was anointed young. He was anointed before he fought Goliath. He had to have been anointed before he fought Goliath. Because you need an anointing when you fight giants. You need God's anointing when you fight giants. And sometimes we face giants in our life. We face these things. They're hard. They're difficult. So King Saul used his anointing. It says for himself, for his own agenda. Try to kill David. We won't go into great detail. But King David and King Saul did things wrong, both of them. David was quicker to repent, especially when the prophets came and, and he went through all what he did. And, you know, David didn't correct his children. Either did Samuel, either did Eli. If you pay close attention, never corrected their family. If you show personal preference on your family, you're not walking in the truth and sincerity of God. It has to be across the board. The word is the word. The word says this is wrong, but you only tell other people it's wrong, but you allow it in your own family without saying, then that's wrong. I'm sorry. It's just the wrong thing to do. I preach what the Bible says. The Bible says it's wrong. It's wrong. No, not debatable. In the world, before I used to do a lot of bad things, I lived in my truth. Anybody know what your own truth is? It changes daily based upon how people treat you, right? Well, the truth is changing today, you know, because it's different for me. I uh, bartend, worked in nightclubs, dealt drugs. When you do that, your truth changes because if people mistreat you or do something, then okay, that's going to change for them. But God has one truth. And when he starts to bring us into the process of deliverance, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful because he helps us to become more than we could even expect or understand to be. Amen. Like the song says, I was nobody until I met somebody. Amen. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. King David was also quick to repent. We know that. Not King Saul so much. And the cost that King Saul had to pay was not only his anointing, but the kingdom. Now, he had the kingdom and did 40 years in the kingdom, which is the word. But he didn't do it with the fullness of God. He could have been more victorious. He could have walked in more blessings. You all know that in this, before I get to Jesus and close that, David, King David, it was said in Old and New Testament, that he had a heart after God. I'm sure it had different qualities in it. I'll give you the scripture in the New Testament. But I'm sure that the qualities, you know, at times I thought, maybe because he was quick to repent. Anybody ever thought that? And it's part of it. Yes, of course. But that's not why he had a heart after God. Let me share something with all of us, including me when I read it again. So Saul suffered that. But in Acts 13, 22, it says this. But God removed Saul and replaced him with David, a man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. This is the key in the bottom. He will do everything I want him to do. That's the power. Because he had fault, didn't correct his children, there was rape in his family, there's all kinds of things wrong. Sent out Uriah to get killed by the hand of Joab, pulling back the forces, the archers caught him. 
just so he could cover up Bathsheba and cover up that sin and do all of that. And I don't have to go into that, but do you know that already is a lot? It's like hiring an assassin. He had the power to do anything. And the prophet said, everything was in your hands. All you had to do was ask God. But he himself took it upon himself, but repented. We know what happened, right? He lost his first child with Bathsheba. We understand there's consequences. I'm not putting any target on anything. I'm simply giving the word. That's what the word says. That's it. That settles it for me. And I know Pentecostals taught, were taught, you know, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Us believing it applies to us. Us believing it doesn't make it happen. God saying it makes it happen. Amen. He's the power. He's the word of God. Jesus is what? The word of God manifested. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yeah. I mean, that's power. John 1, 14. This is the power we have in us. Could I get a little excited for him? I'm glad I got living water in me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why we don't drink enough water. We get dehydrated. Don't get spiritually dehydrated. We got living water in us, man. Let it flow. That's what we got to tell God. Amen. But I don't want to flow that way. We can't do that. We have to let it flow in our homes. And it's hard sometimes, amen, because we get to know each other good and well, and we know each other's buttons, amen, and we don't want to stop the condo. And I'm going to flat that condo right there. I ain't going to say nothing about that. No, we have to let God be God by submitting to Him. By submitting to Him, we allow Him, not giving Him permission, but we allow Him to use us as that conduit. Because it has to be a choice. We can be the conduit or... Can't do it. See, you guys don't. You guys, you guys are not like that. What is it? Can't do it. Should we say that? Is it setting us up? No. <laughs> Just asking to repeat. So that's the scripture. It says he will do everything I want him to do. The other translation says whatever I ask shall be done by him. I can go over the translations, but I believe the key, the key, is to do what God tells you. Not being perfect, because I'm far from that. Now, I would not qualify for the kingdom of heaven. But because of Jesus, I not only qualify, I got living water flowing inside of me. And sometimes I wish it would just gush out like a rapid. But, you know, it just would overtake things. And, you know, but it doesn't. It has to flow. It has to flow. Amen. And I mean, when I was younger, I used to, as a Christian, I used to rap it, not flow. You know. I used to say things like the Bible would say, but I'd use it out of context <laughs> in my own family. Because I was so excited. I wanted, my, I wanted my family to go to heaven. When I got born again, I'm going, oh, my family's going to hell. Because I'm realizing these all evil things and bad things we're doing. So I wanted them saved, but I, I thought I can't save them. But I want to do the right thing, you know. So I was trying to witness to my mom. How many know it's hard to witness to your mom when she knows you was like a train wreck all your life, a disobedient, wasn't really, you know, good at home and cussing and drugs. And my mom's like, oh, yeah, right. You're going to tell me, right? So, I mean, I, I can see that, but I didn't care. One day, I remember my mom told me, and I shared this before, but she told me, she goes, I'm good to my children. And I said the wrong thing. I said, even scorpions feed their own. <laughs> that probably took another year to get saved. You know, I just, it's not the thing to say, but, you know, you mean well, right? Your intention is well, but totally out of context or application. Yeah, so, and I've done that before. I can admit it. I, you know, I did that. I don't do that anymore. But I, I remember, you know, but my mom did get saved. Praise God. And God, you know, does great and mighty work. Uh, judgment doesn't save people. Amen. Conviction does, you know, and deliverance from the Father. Jesus, I want to say this so that we can understand it in closing. Jesus is heaven's conduit, but he's not a conduit. The reason he's not a conduit, because he is God in the flesh. And he doesn't need us to give him any answers. He doesn't need us to give him any explanation other than what the truth is, which he is. So being the son of God, he uses us as the conduit. He is God in the flesh. If you really believe what the word says, then he's not a conduit because he's all-knowing. Though he suffered in the flesh, yes, and he went through the pain for us. Those nails were for us, for everybody. But I studied, I went and I even, I even looked at, you, know, I can't, you can't go to the rabbis because they'll be a little story. They'll be like, we're waiting, we'll let you know when he comes. But no, that, you know, he already came once. <laughs> so we, we worked together understanding the Old Testament. Just like Paul, Paul was a Pharisee. He was so educated, and it was Saul. He was a Pharisee. He understood the Word of God. But now he had to be introduced to Jesus. Now he becomes a conduit of living water. Powerful, powerful living water which you possess but if you block off the dam if you stone it out and cause a stop of that flow 
the water will become stagnant sooner or later and nothing can live in stagnant water it's not living water anymore you know that's why Jesus told the woman at the well that the water I got you'll thirst no more that's living water that flows out of you out of you young people the people you can touch that we can't young people can always minister to young people because it's more of a connection and when your Holy Ghost filled living water coming out of you and not spurts I mean now and then amen, amen. then you can be the witness that we cannot because we don't have the connection with the youth out there in school or anywhere else that's why our youth is so important amen our youth over there the, the, the small ones the cakey they're so important you know and our prayer is always that you know the churches would be filled but my prayer always is that the people in the church would be filled because that's the most important thing that you all get filled I get filled with the power of what God has for us because we have the Holy Ghost in us the Holy Spirit is going unleash it unleash it the Holy Spirit doesn't go can't do it you can't do it Michael don't even try Michael the Holy Spirit doesn't tell you that Holy Spirit goes take a chance let it flow let it flow let it flow today I just ask that the Lord would help you to let it flow you got living water in you amen, amen. and that water is precious water brings life and that water in you brings eternal life through your witness amen so even if you're feeling mean knock it off well, sometimes I get mean I can be honest right I get mad then I get mean right then you try to close the door before you get ugly as my wife would say because for mean you go to ugly you know it doesn't matter how good you look on the outside how nice you are, you're ugly my one of my bosses used to tell me I can put a tuxedo on a monkey but it's still a monkey Rocky like, okay, I guess that's addressed to me in some way or form. <laughs> in other words, we have to be able to let God change us because we love Him. All of this is based on love, all of it. He is great. Not to take lightly who He is or what He does, but I thank God for all of you today. Know that Jesus wants to use us as a conduit, living water that changes even environment and different things. And He's just waiting for us to make that move. It has to be like the God of Yosemite, it has to be, Lord, I don't understand it all. It's difficult for me, but I'm going to submit my will to yours. I'm going to submit myself. I know we have mission. Um, like th this ministry raises up leaders. This is what we do. We have Bible college. We do what we do. But I don't know. You, you're going to be preaching one day. You know that, right? You're going to be preaching. I know that's right. I know. That. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say hi to everybody. I'm going to lift you up to the camera. This young lady is going to be preaching one day. And I'll be hearing her preach. Amen. And I'll be so rejoicing because I love the word. There's a homeless brother that we witnessed to outside William. And, I, and, and we had water baptism on uh, Resurrection Sunday after service. We do that on Resurrection Sunday. What an appropriate day. We just have a lot of fun, you know. And most of the people have been water baptized, I don't know, a million times. I don't know how many times. But we go and we just have a great time. And some, but William showed up. Never been baptized in his life. Homeless guy that we've been witnessing to. And he got water baptized. Asked him if he wanted to, you know, and just made sure that, you know, he understood. And he said, yeah, he goes, I've never been water baptized, you know. And, and um, so when he was about to leave the area where we were, I told him, William, you're going to be preaching in the street one day, you know. But you're not going to live by that shopping cart too much longer. And you know what he said before that? He said, I'm not going to live and die by this shopping cart. He prophesied into his own life. And I said, man, William, I come in agreement with you. I'm, I'm, you know, there. doesn't mean it happens all of a sudden, but every, now, you know, every now and then I see him, he goes, I've been sober five months. I'm like, praise the Lord, give me knuckles. But the greatest thing, I believe, is when you don't hold back, and Benaiah does the same thing, and we hug each other. When I went to hug him, he pulled back the first time. And he said, I'm, I said, no, it's okay. That hug changes lives. So what I'm saying is that love changes lives. He hadn't been hugged in so long. He hadn't been touched. Okay, so he's dirty, okay? And I've got to admit, I pray, don't let nothing jump on me that shouldn't jump on me, Lord. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to pray because I'm, I'm, I'm in the environment. I'm doing things. But my wife will testify that I've been asked to do things that scared me at times. Hug a patient with AIDS in Oahu, full-blown, years ago. The hardest thing I did was at Halimakua, through a back door, is hugging a person that had the flesh-eating disease. And I was snuck in, basically, and did it. Hopefully nobody from Holly Kamala are watching. They're not going to get in trouble today. Anyways, um, <laughs> but um, the Lord told me to do that. And I was scared. I'm going to be honest with you. I was scared. But my faith pushed me through. Not fear. I was scared. I was scared because, oh, my gosh. And whatever I get goes home. 
goes home to my wife, my family. Whatever happens to me happens to them. But having faith in God is greater than the physical evidence of what we see. And I'm not bragging. I, that's why I'm honest. I said I was scared. And you might say, well, if you have faith, you're not scared. Have you hugged somebody with a flesh-eating disease? Well, I was scared. We've dealt with people that got healed from tuberculosis, putting hands on it, knowing it's airborne. Little girl, five years old. And then they say misdiagnosed. No, that was the Holy Ghost. They just want to take away the, the, the power of God and the diagnosis they already had given this young girl. And it's not us. It's the living water that comes out of us. And when I prayed, I said, Lord, I prayed, bring me somebody outside the church. I didn't ask for a homeless person. Could have been another person. Could have been a multi-billionaire. But it was William. And William is important to God. Because one day he's going to preach on the street. Amen. And I told him, I'm going to come listen to you. Yes. I'm going to come listen to you preach. I'm going to say, just like you say, hallelujah. hallelujah. But he's singing uh, Bible songs. He's singing, you know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And he told me, I never learned those songs. But I know them. So he circ every time he says he needs help, he circles the, the, the church. He just circles it, circles it. I told him, William, what are you doing today? Because I'm certain because the power comes from the walls. He tells me the power. And I'm thinking, am I missing something here? You know, am I so comfortable with the presence of God that I'm not sensing what someone that's just coming in? Amazing, yeah? God is good to show us that so that we always honor Him and love Him respect him so today let living water flow out of you amen let the living water of christ flow out of you and god bless you for listening i'm thankful for you visiting thank you for joining us today we're so blessed to have you god is so good to us online we're so blessed to have you watch let living water flow out of you amen you won't flood anywhere it'll all be good it'll all be well so father we thank you this morning as we come to a close of this service but not our day we want to give you glory and honor father we thank you jesus for what you've done Thank you for helping us to be that conduit, to flow that living water out of us, to be able to accomplish the assignments that you have. And so we thank you for all those in the Bible that set an example, some of what not to do, but most of what to do, and following that great love pattern of Jesus Christ. This morning, if you never asked Christ into your life, I'd like to just pray for you. If you're watching online in the house, I believe you're all saved, but in, just in the unlikely event that you're not, I'd like to pray with you too. But just raise your hand. God can see you out there too. We're just going to pray a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me for my sins. I thank you, God, for all you've done for me. And I receive my eternal life through Jesus Christ, your son, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Simple and powerful. Never rehearse. Just open up your heart. If you don't have a Bible, we'll send one to you. Uh, you can go to uh, wordoftruthmaui.org. Tap into the website. If God touches you to give an offering, we're a mission church, which means we have 22 outreaches. So you can give by pressing that green button. It takes you securely to where you have to go. But we appreciate you. Love you. God bless you all over. Oahu, Texas, California, we know. Georgia, we even heard China gets us at times. So we're so thankful for everybody watching, getting the word of God, knowing that we love you and care for you. If you got born again during a service, even if you're watching in the archives, give us a call. Let us know through an email. Send your prayer requests in. We do get them. We love you.